Hello folks, this is Mr. Fry with a video about how to solve gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy problems. Uh, on screen, you'll notice that I have the formulas for each of these things here. I've got the gravitational potential energy formula here, which is mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the object's height above the ground. Uh, I also have the kinetic energy being equal to one half the object's mass times the velocity squared. Um, throughout this video, you'll notice that I'm going to solve for all of these variables. So not only will we solve for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, but we'll also solve for mass, uh, the acceleration due to gravity, uh, and height, as well as some um, object's velocity. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the problems. Um, what is the kinetic energy of a 25 kilogram object moving at a velocity of 5 meters per second? Okay. On these first uh, few problems, I have the units with uh, the values in the equation to make a couple of points to you. Uh, and then the rest of the problems, you'll notice that I do not include the units in the calculation, uh, only in my final answer. Uh, but to start with here, we got the kinetic energy equation. Uh, and we notice we've got the, uh, the mass and the velocity here in the problem. So we do the following substitutions. We put the 25 kilograms in for mass, the 5 meters per second in for velocity. Uh, and you'll notice I have this PEMDAS here. This, these are the order of operations for a standard math problem. Uh, and uh, notice that I put the squared from the velocity here on the outside of the parentheses. Um, that is to avoid confusion because if we put it on the inside of the parentheses, it would appear to be an acceleration measurement here. Uh, and this is not an acceleration measurement. This is the velocity of the object being squared. Uh, now the order of operations tell us that we should do parentheses and exponents first before we multiply, divide, add, or subtract. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to take 5 uh, and square it. Okay, so I'm going to simplify here. Uh, and that turns it this into 25. Uh, and you'll notice that the square also affected the units here. Now I, uh, like I say in other problems in this video, I will not do this just to uh, simplify things a bit. But I'm making a point because the units for energy are joules. And if this is going to come out in joules, then the units also will lead us to that answer. Uh, and that is exactly what we see happening here. We know that a joule of energy is basically a newton meter. Uh, and this is uh, this comes from uh, one kilogram um, being times against meters per second squared to get us the Newton. Uh, and then the extra squared part of the meter here is the meter part of a Newton meter, which is the definition of a joule. Okay, so just bear with me here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take one half of 25. We're going to start our multiplying from left to right, and we get 12.5. Uh, and then we drop down here with the 25 uh, and then multiply those together to get our final answer of 3,125 joules, which you should circle if it's on a quiz. And that's your final answer. Again, uh, joules coming from uh, the multiplication of these units here that gives us a newton times a meter, which is a joule. Here's the next question. What is the gravitational potential energy of a 150 kilogram object suspended five meters above the Earth's surface? Okay, for this question, um, we're using the gravitational potential energy equation, um, and we're making the following substitutions. We're putting the 150 kilograms in for mass. We're using the known value of uh, the acceleration of gravity on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the height of the object is from the problem, 5 meters. Uh, here, we don't have to worry as much about um, the order of operations, so we just multiply from left to right. Uh, I highly recommend using a calculator. It makes things a little faster here, and you get 7,350 joules. Okay, just uh, to a reminder on the units here, a kilogram times meter per second squared gets you the newton, uh, and a newton times a meter is newton meters are joules, so that's the unit. Now, I'm going to drop the units out for the rest of these, so I'll speed it up a little bit, uh, but you see how the units work now, so I think we can safely focus on the numbers to make sure that you guys are getting the algebra correct. Uh, an object with a kinetic energy of 2,160 joules has a mass of 120 kilograms. What is its velocity? Okay, so we're solving for a different variable here. We're using the kinetic energy equation and we're making these substitutions. Notice I've left the units out, but I did keep uh, 
my, my method is the exact same here. I've got the 2,160 joules in for kinetic energy. I bring the one half down. The 120 kilograms for mass is right here in the problem. And my variable is velocity squared. Okay. Now, in order to undo this or to, to get this down to where we have one variable being equal to a number, uh, we need to simplify. Right now, what we can do is take one half of 120, and we'll do that to bring it, make it a 60. We bring down everything else around it, uh, and then we need to try to get velocity by itself. So right now, velocity is being multiplied by 60. So the opposite operation is to divide both sides of the equation by 60. Uh, and that would cause the 60 on the right side of the equation to disappear. In other words, it simplifies to a 1. Uh, so you can just drop it out because anything times 1 is that value. Uh, and then you need to do this division here in your calculator, which simplifies to 36. And we're bringing down the v squared. Uh, now what this says, this expression right now is saying is that the answer, the velocity, times itself is equal to 36. Uh, and the opposite operation of squaring something is to take the square root of that. Okay, so you would need to take in your calculator the square root of 36. Uh, and then the square root of v squared is simply v, which is what we want. Okay, so we've got the velocity, the answer to this problem, in other words, is 6 meters per second. This object is traveling at 6 meters per second. Since it has a mass of 120 kilograms, well then that is what would allow us to calculate its kinetic energy. Okay, so your final answer is 6 meters per second. Here's the next question. An object whose mass is 43 kilograms um, is hanging from on a thin wire. The object has a potential energy of 3,160.5 joules. How high is that object above the ground? We're going to be solving for height using the gravitational potential energy equation. These are your substitutions, okay, with no units, just to simplify the math. You can tell here that the, we can immediately simplify the multiplication on the right, okay, 43 times 9.8 gives me 421.4 times height bring everything else down and then right now we've got the the answer the height multiplied by 421.4 so we need to divide both sides of the equation by 421.4 uh, when you do that uh, the number drops out of the right side of the equation it simplifies to 1 so you just have h by itself that's what we want uh, and then the height would be equal to uh, you do this operation here in your calculator 3160.5 divided by 421.4 and you should get 7.5 meters. However, uh, as I usually show my students, it's also possible to rearrange the equation before you put numbers in it. Uh, and if you're going to do that for this equation, you would need to leave uh, height by itself and divide both sides of the formula by mass times gravity. Uh, so that would look like this. Height is equal to the gravitational potential energy divided by mass times gravity. And as you can tell here, as I flip through the um, this parts of this slide, uh, that it, the answer comes out to the exact same operation. Okay, so you're doing the exact same multiplication here and dividing by the same number and getting the exact same answer. Either way is fine. Um, so I just wanted to show you both so that you can do whichever one you're most comfortable with. Here's the next question. An object has a kinetic energy of 96 joules. Its velocity is 4 meters per second. What is its mass? Um, you'll notice this one is solved for you already on screen. Um, we have the kinetic energy equation and the, the substitutions. Uh, and you can tell I simplified the exponent and then divided both sides of the equation by 16. Um, once I did that, I was left with one half the mass. In other words, one half of the answer being equal to six. So to undo a, a one half, uh, you would multiply both sides by two, and you would get a final answer of 12 kilograms. Final answer. Here's the next question. An object has a potential energy that is 833 joules. Its height above the ground is 4.25 meters. What is its mass? Okay, we're solving for mass using this equation for gravitational potential energy and making these substitutions. We'll simplify the multiplication on the right side of the equation using a calculator, preferably, and then dividing both sides of the equation by that product. 
Okay, so we're doing 833 divided by 41.65, and our final mass came, comes out to 20 kilograms. Final answer. I switched up a uh, previous problem to solve for a different variable. So you've seen this problem before in a different version, but I changed it. An object whose mass is 43 kilograms is hanging on a thin wire on another planet. The object has a potential energy of 3,160.5 joules, and it's 3 meters above the ground. What is the acceleration due to gravity on this other planet? Fun question. Here we go. GPE. Uh, formula and the following substitutions leaving gravity as the variable this time instead of a constant since it's another planet we're solving for that acceleration okay now I'm going kind of the long way through this I would divide both sides of the equation by 43 uh, which simplifies everything down to this and then dividing both sides of the equation by 3 uh, you find out that the acceleration due to gravity on this other planet is 24.5 meters per second squared uh, so it's a whole lot more massive planet than Earth because it is pulling on it objects near it a whole lot harder um, than Earth does. Okay, Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please uh, like the video and subscribe uh, to my channel. I really appreciate you watching and hope this helped a lot. This was Mr. Fry. I'll see you next time.